Hey everybody, it's Dana and welcome back to my YouTube channel and blog. Today I am playing with a very special stamp set. This is a stamp set from the Collective Creators. So let's go ahead and get started with the video. So I'm going to show you a sample card that I came up with for our design today. Now this cute, adorable little mug comes in the Collective Creators stamp set. My friend Mary designed this stamp set and I'm so honored to be sharing it with you guys today. The full stamp, stamp set looks like this. So you get this adorable little mug as well as craft supplies that are poking out the top in a world that you can stamp with the mug or without the mug. I love that. And you also get a couple of sentiments to go with it. I'm also using this fun crafty stamp set from Simon Says Stamp. And I'm going to use a couple of the elements in here and the sentiment and this beautiful birthday bash honeybee paper. I love this paper, it's actually my favorite right now in my craft room. So let's go ahead and get started. Now this stamp set is on sale with by my girlfriend Mary Polanco and I'll send you over to her video. And I want to make a card using this because she has a few of these left and they go to help a very important cause. So 100% of the profits go to Strength After, which is a distress disaster helpline. It's a 24 hour helpline and it helps with people are going through natural disasters and um, it's an emotional support line. So I wanted to be able to allow you guys to see this beautiful stamp set and head on over to her Etsy shop to pick this up. All right, so I have some Nina Solo White cardstock here, and I'm going to grab my Versafine Claire ink to go ahead and stamp this out. So like I said, I think Mary might have maybe 30 of these left, so they're gonna be a hot commodity. So I will make sure to put a link to her full video as well as a link to her Etsy store so you can go ahead and pick this up. So I'm firmly pressing on it to that stamp using my Mini Misty. And I'm gonna get me a good first impression. Now I'm gonna have take this paper out and I'm going to scoop in one of the pieces of paper from the Honey Bee Birthday Bash. I love this like funky Ray Distress Ray background. So since I used it on my other card, I wanted to use it on this card as well. So I'm picking out where the colors I want for my mug. So I'm gonna line this up and then I'm gonna go ahead and shift my paper. Now, although my paper does not fit directly into my Mini Misty, I can still move it around to get it exactly where I want my sun rays to be. And I wanna encapsulate more of the, the pinks, the yellows and the purples on this. So I'll go ahead and remove my lid and I'm going to use a couple of my magnets just to hold my paper in place. Now, once I do that, I make sure I have everything lined up where I want it. And then I can go ahead and ink this back up. Now this ink, this stamp is dirty. So I wanna make sure to clean this stamp before I go to stamp it again. Cause I don't need the full image on this one. I just really need the cup part because I wanna do a little bit of paper piercing or paper piecing rather. So I'm gonna use a little bit of spray on that. I'm going to use my little uh, chamois cloth that's very, very dirty. <laughs> and I just have my grid that I usually line up my sentiments with and my mini misty. I'm gonna block off the top part of that stamp where all the craft supplies are because I just want the mug. I don't need the craft supplies at this point because we're gonna do something different with the craft supplies that are in the mug. So just make sure to stamp right up to the top of the mug and it's going to include the bottom pieces of the images, but that's okay. I can cut those away later. I'm going to clean off my grid mat real quick and then I can go ahead and close my misty lid. There is so many ways to color up this mug from the Collective Creator stamp set. So many ways. As Soon as I saw it, I knew I wanted to paper piece this. For some reason, it just screamed like, I wanna have some color, but I don't wanna have color with having to color in the images. And who would not want such a fun and festive mug? Now, since I have that done, I can go ahead and take my Mini Missy out the way and I need to trim this down. Now, the paper piece, you wanna make sure that you cut directly on the black line. 
This way you can make sure it's going to line up with what you're paper piecing it onto. So I'm gently just going around the black lines. I don't have to be too perfect with this because I can go back in and clean up some of the edges with a black marker or a black Copic marker. So I'm just gonna continuously go around this image, being careful to cut in between the pieces across the top. Now, once I have this all cut out, I have that little bit of that sun ray in the middle of my mug. Now, if you were just coloring this, this would be oblivious to you. It would not make any difference to you. But because I'm paper piecing this, I need to get that center piece out. So instead of trying to fussy around with it with a pair of scissors, I'm just gonna grab my X-Acto knife. And again, I'm going right along that black line. So I just press down, I'm working on a craft mat that I can actually cut into. So that's giving me the ability to cut into this without damaging my desktop. Now, once I have this all trimmed out, now you can see the handle which is exactly what we need to see when you're paper piecing. Just remember that you have to cut out those elements that you do not want to have any of that decorative paper in. So now I can go ahead and bring back in my little mug and make sure everything lines up and it does. And look how cute that mug is. That like to me is like sun shine coming up with rainbows in my coffee. <laughs> So I'm going to grab myself a dark color Copic. I think this was BV25. And you know, you can go around it with black, you can go around it with a dark gray. Since I already had this Copic marker sitting on my desk, I just decided to do it with the dark gray. Because there is still some of the black line there, I'm going to be okay. And remember the black line is also on the mug that's stamped on the white paper. So as long as I have all of that together, I'm going to be fine. Just clean up those edges just a little bit. And now none of the white part from the paper is going to show because I cleaned up those edges. Now once that is done, I wanna go ahead and color up my images across the top. So I have a handful of Copic markers here and I'll make sure to list all the Copic markers that I use. I totally forgot about putting up my caps so you could see it that way but it's okay, I'll make sure to list them below. Now I'm just going to do some really, really quick Copic coloring. There's nothing fancy this Copic coloring. I'm not trying to add a lot of depth to this, but I do wanna grab a piece of scratch paper just so I can color this in. So the way I Copic color is I'm a shifter. I have to shift my paper so I can see where everything's lining up. I like to be able to see where my tip of my marker is going to be. So I always have a tendency to rotate my image around so I can see exactly where I'm going to be putting all of my ink. Now you don't have to do this, but a lot of people that I know, we're rotators. <laughs> we just like to rotate things around. So I'm just quickly doing this Copic coloring. Again, like I said, it's not fancy work here. Now I do envision myself totally, totally using this in no line water coloring. Again, it's a perfect medium for this and also using color pencils. But today the paper piecing just kind of screamed to me and I was like, okay, that's what we're gonna do today. We're just gonna go ahead and paper piece this. Now, like I said, 100% of the profits are going to be going to a um, charity that Mary has picked out. And again, that is Strength After, it's a distress, um, Disaster hotline is 24 hours a day and it gives some emotional support. All right, so now the colors that I picked just happen to match the colors within my paper. Anytime I color, I always do this. I always make sure to match my Copic colors to my paper. That way it eliminates the frustrating part of, is this going to match if I pick my paper after the fact? So if you wanna get something that looks very cohesive, make sure to pick out your paper first and then pull in your coloring. If it's markers, if it's watercolor, it's, if it's pencils, if it's chalks, just make sure you have the paper that you want first so you're not frustrated at the end trying to find um, those Copic markers 
or rather the paper that's going to match your Copic markers. All right, I'm almost done with the coloring here. And I'm just using, again, very easy Copic coloring, nothing fancy. Reminder, all of the Copics will be listed below. And again, all of the Copics are matching my paper that I picked. So I have my cute little two sets of pencils here. I have a Copic marker. I also have a pair of scissors and I have a paintbrush. Now for the paintbrush, I didn't want to leave the tip of that white. So I'm going to come in with a little bit of color, like if it's stained the white bristles of my paintbrush. So I'm going to put down a little color and then I'm going to kind of fade it out with my colorless blender. So it just looks like there's a little bit of stain. All right, now we have all the coloring done. And this right here is cute just the way it is. It really is. I think this is just an adorable mug set. But of course, we need to put in that paper. Now look how perfect those colors match because I picked the paper first to match the Copics. For this here, I'm just going to use some wet medium here because this is going to give me the opportunity to slide my piece into place. Now, if I had used my ATG gun, that would be a little bit more difficult to do. So I suggest if you're going to paper piece, just make sure that you use a wet medium. Trust me when I tell you that it's so much easier to get your things lined up. So I'll go ahead and put some of that glue down and that's the Ultra Bond glue. I'm going to grab my tweezers and this is just really to keep my fingers from getting really sticky at this point. And I'll go ahead and press that down. And then I can go ahead, because I have a, a wet medium, that glue behind, I can go ahead and start shifting that up just so it lines up perfectly. Now I do have every little piece in between each one of the elements that also has the paper in there. So that little rainbow goes all the way through to my cup. I'll gently press that down and I wanna add a little bit more of that marker right at the bottom of my little ruler. And look how cute this cup is. So before I do anything else with this, I do wanna stamp out my sentiment. So I'm gonna bring back in my mini Misty. I'm gonna line that up, and then I'm going to bring in one of those sentiments. Now the sentiment I thought would go perfect would be this Make America Craft Again. So we're all in the middle of still a pandemic, and I have noticed a lot more people crafting. We're either making masks, we're making cards, we're sending gifts to people that are handmade, and I absolutely love it. I think I've seen more crafters during this pandemic than I think I have the entire time I've been crafting, and I absolutely love it. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and line that up, make sure it's straight on my mug, and then I can close my misty lid. And now I do want to stamp in the same exact ink so I just went ahead and grabbed that clears ink again and this color is let me see it's in the side of my desk this is the nocturne uh, black so I'll go ahead and get that magnet out of the way and then I can go ahead and press down once I rub that over I should get a great first impression which I do voila <laughs> I love this little mug it's so cute now I'm going to set that aside because I want to start in a background. So I have a couple of acrylic blocks here and these acrylic blocks are from Pink and Main. And I want to grab a few of these so I can put some of the images from that Simon Says stamp set to create a background. Anytime you get a stamp set that might have smaller images, make a background, make it a custom background, something that is uniquely yours. So I'm just trying to figure out which images I want to use. And then once I get them arranged on this acrylic block, then I'm going to go ahead and start stamping. Now, anytime you're going to make a background, my biggest suggestion to you is to make sure you stamp off the edge of your paper. This makes it look like your images just aren't floating and it actually looks like designer paper. So I went ahead and stamped that up with the same ink I've been using throughout the whole video. I'll gently press that down and then lift that up. Now you see like those paint brushes have run off that paper. 
That's exactly what you want to do when you're working with images like this. You want to make sure that the design runs off of your paper. Now, I'm not going to color in this background. I want it to be a little bit striking against the mug, and I really don't want anything to compete with my mug. So I'm just rotating the images so I can get a different look or different layout each time I stamp it down. Now, if you wanted to just have this all be the paintbrushes or the palette or the paint tube itself, you can do that as well. You're just going to make sure to repeatedly stamp this and make sure to go off the page. But this stamp set just worked so perfectly with the Collective Creator stamp set that I was like, yeah, I have to go with this stamp set. I'm going to come in and finish off with that cluster of three. That kind of fills up my paper nicely. Now, I do have some areas that look a little bit bare to me. So I'm going to come in with a smaller acrylic block and just a pair of scissors. And I can take these scissors and fill in some of those areas that I might feel need to have something, something there. And usually they're the areas along the corners where there's a lot of white space on the corner and I just need to fill that in. Again, I'm rotating that image to make sure that everything like kind of lines up and I don't have anything that's overflowing. I thought about putting one in, in the middle, but then I realized the cup is going to be, or my mug is going to be covering it. So I don't need to have anything in the middle. Now, once I have that done, I need to fussy cut out this mug. I'm going to do the same exact way that I did earlier, but this time I'm just leaving a little bit of a white border. And I do make sure to cut in between all of the other elements as well. Now let's build our card. I have some purple cardstock that I went ahead and pre-matched with my paper. And I did go ahead and trim down my panel that I did the decorative piece on. I am going to use some wet adhesive on this because I want this to be able to shift when I lay it down. Just to make sure that I get the placement of it correct. So again, I'm using my Ultrabond glue, which is my favorite glue that sits on the corner of my desk. I will go ahead and flip that over. And this black and white actually looks very striking just against the purple. So you can actually do this and just put a sentiment on here and you will be good to go. I'm going to line that up and then gently press that down into place. And now I want to bring in my mug. How cute does this mug look on this with all that little decorative extra craft supplies behind it. I wanted this mug to sit up. I did not want to lay this flat. I wanted just a tad bit of dimension to this. So I'm going to go ahead and put some 3M foam tape all on the back of this, getting into all the little nooks and crannies. I can go ahead and remove the release paper. And once I remove this, I can go ahead and place this down. Now this card, you guys, is basically finished. I don't really want to add much to this because I want my little mug to be the focal point and the thing that draws your eye in. I am going to use a little bit more of that glue, again, just to allow me the opportunity to shift this mug if I have to, if I don't get it lined up perfectly the first time. So I'll just flip that over, line that up. And then I can go ahead and press that down. And look what a fun card we have here. I think it's so pretty. I gotta make a bunch more of these. All right, so there is our card today. So don't forget, I'll have Mary's information linked below for this very clean and simple card. And I wanna thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. If you have not subscribed, please feel free to do so and hit the bell so you don't miss my next videos. Until next time, everybody, have a great day. Stay safe. Bye-bye.